Today we will be discussing the states of matter and their relationship with thermal energy. There are four states of matter. Three of them are very common or we see them all the time on Earth. Those are solids, liquids, and gases. There is a fourth state of matter that is rarely seen on Earth. It's uncommon. However, it is very abundant, or there's a lot of it in the universe, in outer space, and that is known as plasma. Now, we use models to represent the states of matter because we cannot see particles of matter with our own eyes. So let's take a look at solids first. Solids are molecules that are arranged in regular patterns, right? They take up, up space, they have a definite shape. For example, your pillow is either a rectangle, a square, a circle, whatever shape it may be, and it doesn't need anything to make it that shape. It's also important to consider that solid particles are actually still moving. They vibrate very close to one another. So they are not motionless, they're not still. They're tightly packed, but they're still moving. Liquid molecules, particles, are also very close together. However, the main difference that separates them from a solid is that they flow easily around one another. They are not tightly packed. Liquids also assume the shape of their container. For example, your water in your water bottle is the shape of the bottle. Without the bottle, there is no shape spread out all over the place. Gas particles are even further apart from one another and move at much higher speeds. They're so far apart that they're not even, you know, attracted to one another. It is difficult to contain or to hold on to a gas. You need something like a balloon, um, a jar, a beaker, etc. Now, plasma are the highest temperature states of matter. And they are high at these high temperatures, and what happens is an atom loses an electron. We'll discuss more about this in a few weeks. Some examples of plasma that you can see on Earth are lightning. Um, however, we do know that there's plasma in stars in the universe. Now, going back here, I want to just show you this diagram again. It says increasing energy. You're going to see the same type of diagram here. Now, how is this energy increasing? by adding heat. When you add heat to matter, the particles start to speed up and that causes them to have more energy. So for example, a solid has less energy than liquid. All right, however, plasma has more energy than liquid. We see this happening all the time. States of matter are in constant states of change. So for example, ice cubes can melt into water when heat is added. You leave them outside or you melt them. Then if you're boiling water, say you want to make some pasta, that changes into water vapor, gas. The most energy is seen in this part of the diagram here. Now, just because the state of matter changed, however, it is still water. It does not change what the substance is. This diagram shows a, um, a graphical representation of this. As temperature increases, the state of matter changes. This is also a very important diagram to consider because up until this point, we've talked about how heat is added and energy increases. However, energy also can decrease when heat is removed. For example, there is a reason we leave our ice cream in the fridge. For example, if you left it outside, it's going to melt. If you don't want it to melt, placing it in the fridge removes that thermal energy and slows the particles down. They return to a solid state. Now, there's a very common misconception that heat and temperature are the same thing. What makes them different is that heat is the energy form and energy flows from a hot region to a cool region, and we'll discuss that in a second. Temperature is the degree of hotness or coldness of a body. Temperature measures something called kinetic energy. We will talk more about joules in our forces in motion unit. Now, 
flowing from hot to cold area. Let's discuss that. If you have hot chocolate and you think, it is way too hot, I can't drink it yet, let me leave it out on the counter. You come back, say a half an hour later, it might not be hot anymore. It might be room temperature. The longer you leave it out, the closer to room temperature it will be. The reason for this, as we discussed here, is that heat flows from hot to cold area. So what's happening is that the thermal energy from the hot chocolate escapes into the surrounding gas in the area. If you were to take a thermometer and measure the temperature around a glass of hot chocolate, you would notice that it increasingly will become higher. We'll stop here for now and good luck on the rest of your roadmap items.